I'm excited to present to you our paper titled Reducing Access Disparities in Networks Using Edge Augmentation. We explore how, how the structure of the network can lead to unequal access to information. Our main, main objective is to address these inequalities and propose methods to create a more balanced and fair environment. First, I will give you an overview of the problem. We will talk about how your position in a network can affect your access to important information and the unfair discrimination that can happen based on your position. I will introduce the idea of an access signature that quantifies an individual's access to every other node in the network. And we will discuss the notion of fairness we are adopting. Next, I will present three measures that capture a structural advantage using the access signatures. We will then select one measure for our optimization problem. Then I will define the opti optimization problem itself and discuss the heuristic strategies we used to solve it. Finally, I will present the experimental results. Let's consider the importance of information access, particularly in situations like recruitment. A good example is LinkedIn, when your position in social network determines your access to career opportunities. This means that if you have a better position in the network, you are more likely to have an ad advantage when it comes to finding job opportunities. We simulate the spread of information in networks using the independent casket model and assume information is transmitted with a uniform probability. Since computing these probabilities is computationally challenging, we estimate them through Monte Carlo simulations. In our scenario, node 8 is the source of the information it transmitted to its neighbor with a probability of alpha. Let's say node 1 receives the information from node 8. <coughs> Once node 8 computes transmitting, node 1 starts spreading. In the next turn, suppose node 2 receives the information. Then node 2 starts spreading the information. In our specific case, node 3 and 7 do not receive the information, but node 4 becomes the only recipient. Now, node 4 doesn't have any neighbors to continue passing the information to, so the transmission stops at this point. In the end, each node has a certain probability of receiving the information from the source. We present this likelihood as P of U and V, which denotes the probability of node V receiving the information from node U. In the given example, the probability of node 4 receiving the information of node 8 is alpha cubed. Social network formation often introduces biases in their structure that creates disadvantages for individuals who lack access because of factors like demographic or socioeconomic status. This results in better positions individuals enjoying more privileges, while the network structure reinforcing existing advantages and widening the gap further. By considering the edges as biased input data, we intervene through edge augmentations to promote fairness and ensure equitable outcomes for all members of the network. We consider each node as a unique source of information within the network. To quantify a node's advantage in accessing all the distinct information available, we introduce access signatures. As an example, we can see the access signature for node 8. In our research, we take a fair decision-making approach to address biases in network structure. We consider individual notion of fairness. Instead of deciding who deserves information, we focus on maximizing the spread of information to all members of the network, prioritizing the welfare of the least advantaged individuals. This approach aligns with the difference principle proposed by Rawls, which argues for maximizing the benefit of the least advantage. To quantify information access advantage, we propose three measures, broadcast, influence, and control. The broadcast measure captures node ability to distribute information to all members of the network, especially those who are least advantaged. It is quantified as the minimum value within its access signature. The influence measure captures node visibility and overall impact within the network. It is determined as the average of its access signature. The control measure captures node control over the flow of information. Its formulation is complex, resembling the between the centrality measure, but in information access setting. Optimizing for influence measure tends to reinforce advantages for well-positioned nodes. This results in a rich get richer phenomenon where those who already have advantages gain even more control and influence over others. This can potentially worsen the existing advantage gap. On the other hand, 
optimizing for control measure focuses on the brokerage ability of nodes to act as an intermediary. However, our concern is reducing the control of the nodes and not increasing them. In contrast, prioritizing broadcast objectives can promote connectivity among disadvantaged nodes. This enables mutual support and access to vital information while, while also mitigating the increasing dominance of the majority. Our research explores the discrete optimization problem of maximizing broadcast. This objective aims to maximize the minimum access between all pairs of nodes. We propose heuristic strategies for selecting edge augmentations. Some heuristic focus on connecting the most disadvantaged nodes to each other. Specifically, BC Cord connects nodes that have the least access to each other. Other heuristics focus on establishing connection between the most disadvantaged and the most advantaged nodes, determined based on either the broadcast, like BC1, or influence measure, like Influ. Lastly, to provide a baseline for comparison, we include a random heuristic that connects nodes randomly. We perform experiments on real-world networks, ranging from 1,000 to 10,000 nodes in size. We allocate a budget of 200 edges for interventions. We consider four network-specific alpha values, ranging from slow to fast spreading rate. And to estimate the access signatures, we conduct 10,000 simulations. Now we will share the outcomes of our experiments. Our main objective was to increase the minimum advantage among nodes. We plotted the number of interventions on the x-axis and the minimum advantage on the y-axis, showing the performance of various heuristics in increasing both broadcast and influence measures. A higher increase in the minimum advantage indicates better performance of the heuristics. We noticed that both the influence and the BC court heuristics consistently show the most improvement for both measures. Our second aim was to increase similarity among nodes' access signatures, enabling a more equitable view of the network for, for all nodes. This is crucial in combating the concentration of power and ensuring unbiased access to information. We plotted the violent distribution of signature distances. A greater downward shift in the, shift in the distribution indicates better heuristic performance. We observed that both the influ and BC court heuristics reduced the maximum signature difference and notice, noticeably shifted the tail of the distribution downward. Our final objective is to reduce access disparities among nodes. We assess this by measuring the advantage gap among nodes for all three measures of advantage. A lower gap indicates better performance of the heuristics. So far, Influ and BC Core were the best performing heuristics. Note that BC Core intuitively focuses on broadcast measure, while Influ focuses on the influence measure. However, in reducing the advantage gap, BC Court significantly outperforms Influ. This finding supports our initial suspicion that optimizing based on influence may contribute to a rich get richer phenomenon. Instead, these results highlight the importance of connecting the disadvantaged nodes together rather than solely connecting them to a central one. In our scenario, each node represented a unique source of information, and it is crucial to ensure access to all this information. To address inequalities in access advantage, we intervened by adding edges to the network. We introduced three measures of advantage, broadcast, influence, and control. Among these, we selected the broadcast measure as our optimization objective, aiming to minimize the maximum access among all nodes. We demonstrated that our preferred heuristic BC court had, had positive outcomes. It improved the welfare of the least advantaged individual, reduced the distances between access signatures, and significantly narrowed the gaps in advantage among nodes. We must acknowledge the limitations of our work. One such limitation is, is that we did not consider that not all individuals may benefit from a specific piece of information. Additionally, we overlook the presence of misinformers. In future research, we can explore directed networks and al alternative information flow models beyond the IC. Additionally, conducting experiments on larger networks would enhance the pra practical usability of our research. Moreover, an interesting avenue would be to extend our problem to address group fairness and explore scenarios 
where the timing of information reception plays a crucial role. Thank you for your attention.